more drama. China saying it will cancel permits to climb the mountain this season. Let's get the latest now. Deshaun joins me in studio as well as Alex Harris. He's also with us. He climbed Everest in 2005. Thank you so much for coming to speak to us. So Deshaun, let's talk to you first. How do you feel about what's happening? I, I suppose the best way to describe it is it's a huge frustration. But at the same time, one has to sort of balance out the the real risk of going to Everest, not the mountain itself, because there's risk there, but mm. um, the real risk of traveling, you see there's lots of travel bans going on because, you know, airports are just such densely populated places. Um, and then just the exchange of, of paperwork and hands and all of that. So uh, one can't really predict how you're going to be affected by it. So I think from my perspective, it really just makes so much sense uh, to take the clues that we're getting from all over the world and say, well, you know, Everest is always going to be there. Um, and maybe for right now, it's not a good time to go. Yeah. So, Alex, of course, uh, China's decision to cancel permits, is there a danger of infection when you climb Mount Everest? How, how would that work? Well, historically, interestingly, on the north side, base camp is accessible by vehicle. So it's always been a place where Chinese tourists and international tourists can quickly get to base camp and interact with climbers. And so you've got climbers on the mountain coming down to rest that are, are, have a, 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 a suppressed immune system now suddenly exposed to these in, incoming uh, bacteria and, and viruses. So it's always been an element where there's been concern around people at base camp. Mm. I think this has just now compounded that effect. And in fact, a couple of years ago, the Chinese side uh, banned the interaction of visitors to base camp with the climbers that were camped at base camp. So it's an inevitable knock-on effect. So 100%, I think with something this uh, virile, the, the risk for a climber would be exponentially more. Yeah, and, and that's mainly because your system is already under so much pressure climbing that mountain, right? So you're much weaker. Yeah, you're under physiological yeah. stress. Your immune system is really hammered. You're in an environment that's low oxygen, so your ability to recover is, is really impaired. And I think what's, what's becoming evident here is immune system is a, is a key thing and a key driver to health. So an impaired immune system or anything that's going to affect your immune system is going to probably make you something more susceptible to something that's really virile. You know? And the environment on Everest just is, 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 is conducive to exactly that. Yeah. So we, of course, spoke to Sibusiso Vilane, who's climbed Everest twice. We asked him about climbers and how they should approach the coronavirus. Let's take a listen to what he says, and we'll continue our conversation. They should be able to also make personal safety judgments. If they get there and they realize the situation is not in their favor, they shouldn't really hesitate to pull it out because I think it does not warrant their lives. We want them back home to celebrate them having succeeded in the expedition. So, Deshaun, you listen to that. You're getting advice from someone who's climbed Everest twice. Do you see this as a setback or giving you more time to actually climb Everest? Yeah, actually, I'm always a positive person when it comes to these things. Number one, sometimes life gives you clues and, and the, you know, all the clues align to one outcome. And for me, that outcome is not Everest right now, you know. And um, I take Sibu Sisa's advice uh, very carefully. And I think all climbers who are heading for Mount Everest right now should do that. Uh, it, it really does come to, down to what Alex is talking about. When you go into high altitude, low oxygenated environment, your body is already under so much strain. And and uh, it really is to just make the call to, to figure out what is the best decision for you given the circumstances. Yeah. Uh, and it is a tough call, you know, because Everest requires huge amounts of prep. Uh, there's a huge amount of money and logistics and all of those things involved. So it's not a decision that one takes lightly. For me personally, it gives me just a bit more time to get fitter and stronger. Yeah, it does. It definitely will. So Alex, we see climbers can still approach Everest from the southern side, and that's Nepal. Uh, they haven't cancelled permits just yet. Do you think that's the right decision? should they follow suit with China? I think they're going to be under enormous pressure to follow suit. I think what's going to happen is that more and more people are going to, and or destinations will impose protocol. And even if your destination is relatively safe or statistically low impacted, 
you're going to look negligent by not following the same protocol. So I think there's going to be a knock-on effect where all of these guys are going to be following protocol. I mean, we've had guys cancel trips now to Everest. You know, climbers tend to be really myopic. Everest climbers tend to be hypermyopic and just focus on that m mountain. And, and I think for the next year to 18 months, the, the, the world's not going to care about Everest. They're going to be focused on, on this particular problem. And so, you know, my advice to these guys is, look, delay your plans, step back, smell the roses, and see it as an opportunity to spend time with your family, spend time at home, and, you know, get your stuff in, in order. And yeah. you've got more time to tackle the problem. And for those who are supposed to be climbing and you have to pull out because of restrictions like this, the money that's been spent on getting you up there, what happens to all of that? Well, I mean, I've, I've not really been in the position of, of having to either withhold money or give it uh, over in, in that sense. But it is. It's a huge decision, you know. Uh, the logistics are, are oftentimes gets paid up front. Uh, so there's nothing you can do about money that's been spent in that, in that mm -hmm. sense. So Sherpas, for instance, get to be booked ahead of time. And in order to... Uh, to confirm their space on your team, you've got to pay up front for that. So there is money that's going to be lost in the process. But again, for me, it's, it comes down to if you have the wherewithal to, uh, to get the funds from wherever it is in the world, then hold off. Go, yeah. go next time. Thank you both so much for your time. Appreciate it. Deshaun and Alex, thanks Thank for coming Thank into you. the studio to speak to us. Still to come.